Hi everybody, Dr. Sean O'Meara. I'm a health and performance optimizing physician from Minnesota, here to discuss a serious problem and issue that I think is going on and getting very little attention. It's associated with COVID, and the situation and issue is the complication of loss of taste and smell associated with COVID. If this isn't a concern for you, I guess you'll probably just drive on, but maybe you know somebody that has had loss of taste or smell. And I would really encourage you, in fact, I would beg you to listen to this video or at least pass this on to them so that they can listen to it because I've done a lot of work and a lot of thinking on this particular issue and I'm appalled at the lack of resources and attention it's getting, a lack of serious uh, recommendations on what to do, because it's such a, a devastating problem. This is akin to having a stroke. You're losing important, very functional senses that you need. They're gonna be connected to your well-being, your quality of life, depression, uh, how you eat, uh, many people are gaining weight as a consequence to the loss of taste and smell. Many people are losing weight as a consequence to loss of taste and smell. Their enjoyment of life is greatly affected. So many people that get COVID experience this and most will regain it. Most regain it probably to the full extent. But there is a percentage of people that may not regain it all the way. We don't know because who's testing before it happens and who's testing after. So I think that's, that's a concern. But a bigger concern for people who lose either a lot of it and don't regain a, a substantial portion of capability or people who never regain any at all and just can't taste and smell anything at all. And it's devastating. And uh, very little is being done about it. And I think I, I, think I know why. I, I think why, why isn't there more serious effort and training going on from the system, from your doctor, the health, uh, uh, big pharmaceutical, uh, big pharma, uh, your insurance company, the government, the CDC. What I'm concerned about is they're just letting the problem continue and until it's large enough that they can figure out a way to make money off of it. And I think that's ridiculous. So I want to try to beat them at their game and nip this problem in the bud. And my I have five recommendations what to be doing some recommendations on uh, what not to do. And uh, so stay tuned, watch this video to the end. I'm gonna keep it as short as possible to make it high yield and uh, so that you value from it. It's not a bunch of wasted time. So first of all, uh, the lo uh, loss of uh, taste and smell, anosmia is the loss of uh, smell. Uh, Agusia or dysgeusia is loss of uh, a taste. So these, these are akin to loss of neurologic function, similar to a stroke. So here's my thinking. And uh, there are recommendations to, to do um, what's called smell training, uh, smell exercises. I, I found that on the internet, that's great. But um, what I've not found that's, I think, really key is this is analogous to how you deal with a stroke. And when somebody has a stroke and they lose the deficit of that arm, um, we tie off the good arm and we make them use the bad arm to try to get it to, we, to be stimulated. So we need to approach this problem similar to how we approach problems through a stroke. But I recommend far more aggressively. The sooner you get to stroke therapy, the better results. So uh, if you don't get to it, you know, months, year down the road, you may never get it back. But with, uh, with COVID, let's get on it right away. So if you got this, even if you got COVID, just jump on these recommendations to start doing so. Maybe you can nip this problem in the bud. We don't know, but maybe this will be preventive so that you don't lose your loss of taste of smell. So my my, my recommendations are all safe. Uh, a lot of these are novel. Nobody else uh, is, is talking about them. And don't be afraid because, because of that, like maybe it's nonsense or it's dangerous. They're all safe. And I think they make a lot of sense. I think they're very reasonable. So I want you to, to listen to them and consider them and uh, start doing that. So uh, I'll get into five recommendations, but a couple things. I don't recommend uh, steroids. Uh, I don't re recommend antibiotics. I think there's complication with those. And I, there's so far no real uh, benefit that, that's seen in doing either of those two. So I would just suspend those uh, and not, not, not consider them unless... You, you are working with a licensed uh, professional, uh, medical professional who, who recommends them. So 
uh, there are much better recommendations I think you do. So first of all, when it comes to smell and taste training, um, smell and taste are linked. So you don't, you can't uh, get as much benefit if you just do one without doing the other. So uh, a lot of recommendations are just practice smelling essential oils and you know, that's, that's good. But what I recommend is combining the senses, working systematically to do many things. So instead of just smelling essential oil and lemon, I recommend picking up a lemon, thinking about what it's going to smell like, cutting the lemon, seeing the juice, tasting the juice, smelling the lemon. Going through this exercise is far more engaging of the neural networks and pathways that are involved with the loss of smell or the loss of taste than if you simply smell an essential oil. So I want you to try to get taste, touch, feel, smell, uh, thinking, visionary, all of that together, working together to leverage neuroplasticity. That's what works in strokes. So you gotta go way more than just smelling something or just not doing anything at all. A lot of people just, you know, have acquiesced to the loss of taste and smell. So really engage those senses and go, go wild, go wild. You know, lemon is one thing, but do many other things and perceive the difference, like get a lime and imagine what the difference of a lime and lemon will taste and smell like and exercise that pathways. You probably get nothing the first time you do this if you have no smell. But the more you think, the more you exercise, the more you engage that, the better you're gonna be. So do the same thing with grapefruits. So grapefruit, lemon, lime, citruses, and then do uh, many other uh, smells. So you wanna try to engage uh, other things like the smell of pine, get a, uh, pine needles uh, are better than essential oil, just pine. Uh, eucalyptus, uh, cinnamon, uh, uh, get, get nutmeg, try to perceive the difference between these spices and the taste, you know, engage the smell and taste. Another key aspect to this is functionality. So <clears throat> try to you, use smells that have kind of functional purpose, you know, like, like the smell of a loved one. Uh, your 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 significant other, your spouse, your children, they they all have a certain smell. Go in and smell them, and try to exercise that smell, and learn, uh, tr try to get, relearn those pathways that are associated uh, with with those particular individuals. And then, functional smells such as fresh food, you know, fresh cut food, uh, old food, old meat, fresh meat, spoiled food. These kind of functional experiences. Uh, engage your pathways more because you're thinking and you, that's what you want to do. You want to engage as many different cortical pathways as possible to help fill in the blanks rather than just doing one, which is smelling essential oil. So a uh, fresh ground coffee would be another good one. So think outside the box as many things, different types of meat, chicken, pork, beef, expectation of what they smell like, then try to smell them. Uh, do that as, as 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 much as you can throughout the day. As, as you do it one time, I, I wouldn't do it one. If I lost myself, I'd be doing it multiple times throughout the day. If it wasn't practical as I was at work, I'd have my my pockets filled with with bottles of essential oil uh, and and smelling them and thinking about the taste and visualizing the fruit and uh, the thing that I was looking at and cutting it and trying to imagine what it would feel like doing that. Uh, throughout the day as much as possible. If, if you're able to be home or you're able to, do, do, once you get home, do these kind of recommendations I talk about uh, that I think will be uh, helpful. Peppermint, mint, spearmint, uh, any kind of extra smell. Uh, I think more positive smells might be more beneficial. Uh, uh, and then fermented foods. So uh, those, those I think would be uh, helpful. So apple cider vinegar, probiotic apple cider vinegar, fermented live raw uh, with microbes, uh, I think are more beneficial than the pasteurized cooked kind. And then um, other fermented foods like uh, kimchi and uh, smell the kimchi, taste the kimchi, feel the kimchi and, and get engaged in the same thing with vinegar. And then uh, fermented sauerkraut and, uh, and then blue cheese, Fer fermented blue cheese has a smell. Smell it, different types of cheese, taste it. Uh, feel the texture, look at it, all of that. Again, engage those, those senses. And then wines, fermented wines. You know, I'm not talk, talking about getting um, 
you know, liquor it up here, just a little bit of wine, smell the wine, a sweet wine, a, a, a dry wine, like a Cabernet. And, uh, and then you could do the different tastes, you know, uh, tasting something sweet. Don't recommend swallowing it, uh, spit it out. Uh, you don't need extra, uh, extra sweet things. Uh, sour taste, uh, salty uh, taste, uh, engage the different senses of the, of the taste. And then um, some other things I recommend is get eating as healthy as possible. Eat the most nutritiously dense food. Google nutritiously, the most nutritiously dense food. Google that, learn about it. Uh, and getting <clears throat> get your zinc up. Zinc is connected to neurologic function and loss uh, with, uh, uh, with the sense of taste and smell. So uh, I prefer... Uh, natural sources to zinc rather than zinc supplementation. So oysters are probably one of the best sources. Shellfish, uh, meat, uh, dairy and cheese are also good. Uh, eggs uh, are also uh, reasonable sources of, uh, of zinc that you can get. So eat as healthy as you can possibly get. And then some other novel recommendations, uh, increase your blood flow. Get some better blood flow. Some of the uh, inflammation from COVID could damage. Uh, you want to get as, uh, th those pathways. You want to get as much uh, of these these elements uh, and, and the, the functionality of these uh, pathways uh, perfused well with blood. So things that will increase your blood flow are sunshine, uh, fasting, and uh, using a sauna, uh, a dry finish sauna. One of the things I notice when I use a dry finish sauna is my fingers start puckering, you know, way more than if I just stick my hands in water. It's the heat the increased blood flow, and that's neurologically mediated. Neurologic pathways drive puckering. And so use that sauna, get in there and uh, dry finish sauna. I recommend 15 minutes, at least 175 degrees, uh, and do as many times as you can a week, like five to seven times a week. And uh, work with a healthcare provider to make sure you don't have any conditions that would be contraindicated to using the sauna. But sauna therapy is a wonderful, wonderful therapy. And then high intensity exercise like sprinting, getting your blood flow up and, uh, and, and, and doing high intensity exercise are all recommendations. Make sure you get plenty of sleep and then uh, work with a healthcare provider, maybe uh, a, uh, an experienced neurologist or somebody can help you re recover this. So I hope you find these recommendations helpful. Uh, this is a serious issue. I've had uh, clients... Uh, that have had this. Unfortunately, I've been able to recover all of them. One of them uh, is a relatively new client and he's had it for several months and I'll, I'm eager to see how uh, these, these recommendations may work uh, for him. But uh, pass this video on to others. Again, I'm a health and performance optimizing physician from Minneapolis. I'm not for profit. Uh, all my recommendations are are offered for free. I don't have any financial interest and in anything that I, I, I recommend ever on my, my website. And if you like this video, give it a like and uh, consider passing it on to other people and maybe consider subscribing to my, uh, my channel. You can uh, learn more about me also on Instagram at Dr. Sean O'Mara at D-R-S-E-A-N-O-M-A-R-A. -A -A. And I'm also on Twitter. All right, well, thanks very much. We'll see you next time.